Det är en kärlek. Det är en kärlek. Det är en kärlek. Det är en kärlek. Det är is mille weakness partners and corello her tashe ni sian shen hal shen clan agas o has adam great to inan velin tigin an ibert special to the ledian of agat so mo weakness as of shen ya so shen agas said berbanok don quidelia den tronona you are also very welcome here this afternoon to our sanitron as we celebrate this most important day in ireland's cultural calendar and I have already thanked Fekno Brennan for the special effort that he's making, Martin Tolin Eve Marfarati. We are so fortunate that he has made a special effort to be in our MC this afternoon. The 16th of June marks the date, as you have heard, of Leopold Bloom's iconic ramble around Dublin on a summer's day in 1904. And I should say to you as well, I should mention the mention, you're also very special. Welcome, I'm very pleased that the translator of your essays into Italian, uh, Dr. Enrico Terranoni, has been able to join us this day to do as well. Yeah. The 16th of June, on a summer's day in 1904, and over a century later, Bloomsday, is a day when we celebrate not only the great talent of James Joyce, but also the great talent of so many creative citizens who, as, as you have heard, have done so much and continue to do so much and will do so much to enrich the culture of our society. And Bloomsday has become an integral part of our cultural fabric a day when citizens in their different circumstances come together to celebrate James Joyce's great legacy, in particular his masterpiece, Ulysses, a work in which Joyce, in his own words, aimed to create a picture of Dublin so complete that if the city one day suddenly disappeared from the earth, it could be reconstructed from my book. That aim was, of course, achieved in Ulysses, which maps Dublin so beautifully and so accurately in all its light and shade and darkness, and enabling, as it does generation upon generation, to experience Leopold Bloom's epic walk through our capital city on that Thursday in June 115 years ago, and so many internal journeys as well. And over a century later, as we celebrate Bloom's Day, we are reminded of the power and impact of great artistic works, of how they reflect back at us the society and era in which they may have been created, and yet move and navigate us through time and place and myriad complex thoughts and emotions, challenging us and daring us to contest and critique the norms of the societies and the age into which we ourselves, migrants and time, have been born. Many decades have passed since Joyce's Ulysses immortalised that day of summer, 1904. And today, in Ireland, we may inhabit a different in many ways, in Ireland, different in so many ways from the one inhabited by Leopold Bloom. But it is an Ireland built on our shared past, a past with which Joyce reunites us, and we return back into the contemporary moment with new insights and understandings. For Ireland owes a unique debt to James Joyce as well as everything else, I think, in his gift of enigma to those who would try to understand us Irish. In describing Ulysses, he also said, I've put so many enigmas and puzzles that it will keep the professors busy for centuries arguing over what I meant, and that's the only way of ensuring one's immortality. <laughs> However, I think we must never let the gift to literature and life and Dublin deflect us from the preceding or succeeding work of James Joyce, a point that Stephen Joyce has made to me. His, I think James Joyce's work, was not a one-work contribution. Above all, it was a life paid as price for what would be an immortal gift, the work left to our literature and us. And last year I said 
We must never forget on Bloomsday the person, the family, and the sacrifices that gave us the groundbreaking literary inheritance that is celebrated all over the world. Ireland owes a debt to James Joyce. And later that year to last year, I had the opportunity to lay flowers at the gra grave in Flanter, where Joyce has rested since 1941, later joined by his wife, Nora Barnacle, and other members of his family. It was a greatly moving moment, allowing me to pay a silent tribute to a man whose genius has echoed across the decades and generations that separate us from June 16, 1904 and whose creativity continues to influence, to challenge, and to transform. And I thought on that visit to Zurich too, how I was encountering aspects of Irish past from which perhaps we have moved on. And therefore, departing I hope forever from such judgmentalism as took the decisions in 1948 on the Department of Foreign Affairs in relation to Joyce's funeral. There can be no doubt that Joyce's immortality is ensured, his name forever etched into the cultural life of a nation from which he remained exiled for most of his life, but where he is today celebrated as one of our greatest ever writers. And as a society, as I have said, we are deeply grateful to those great creatives who play or who have played such an important role in Irish life and arts and in our culture and thus in our democracy. And Bloomsday 2019, for example, would have been Deirdre O'Connell's 80th birthday. And here in the Aurus, we celebrate Deirdre O'Connell, the Focus Theatre and the Stanislavski tradition. And earlier today, we planted a tree in the gardens at Aurus and Uthron to mark her what would be the year of what would have been her 80th birthday. So I think I'm delighted. <laughs> that we had with us, and we have with us, a representative of the members of the O'Connell and the Kelly family. But I'm delighted to welcome all of our guests today who continue to make such a profound contribution to the important and constantly evolving area of the arts, that is Ireland's television and film industry. And I think as well, and I was thinking part of course, this is the week when we have said goodbye to Zeffirelli. How appropriate it is that when we celebrate James Joyce and his work, that such a community are present with us. I read earlier today Declan College's beautiful piece on his grandfather, Linny College, who was projectionist at the Volta in James Joyce's cinema at 45 Mary Street, which would show films in French and Italian in December 1909. So you are a community that are connected through all your efforts, as successful or otherwise. And film and television have a rich history, peopled by a talented and intrepid community who continue to push boundaries, transform the way we view the world, enable us to reclaim and understand our past, but also provoke debate and stir our neglected imagination and challenge our perceptions of how we might understand the world. It was a great privilege more than 20 years ago when I became Minister for Arts, Culture and the Gate, that it was a privilege to establish on board Scornon, re-establish on board Scornon in 1993, and to meet the film community who had waited for quite a while. And board Scornon ahead, the Irish Film Board, now uh, Irish Screen, made a significant and crucial contribution to Irish filmmaking, culture and activity. And today, a new generation has grown up in Ireland where a career in film or television for whichever screen is no longer an unattainable ambition or a career to be pursued by a fortunate few. It is now an area of creative and commercial achievement open to so many highly skilled, creative and innovative people whose talent attracts producers from countries across the world. So may Screen Ireland continue to provide Irish film talent with the opportunity to develop and produce a rich variety of innovative and artistically courageous projects. And may more and more Irish films receive the recognition and critical acclaim abroad that is now beginning to happen. 
And I do want to thank Screen Ireland Gomb Weekas Lobe, or Sakhtan Karahog Shadun Kunan Okart Shah in New Tranona Agro. I want to join with Fagna in thanking Screen Ireland for their assistance in organising today's event. Ireland has been described in what we would call the trade literature as a capital of filmmaking and one of the world's most attractive production environments. God help us for this corporate language, which is marvellous. May we survive it. And due to that, I think this is due to the many gifted directors, writers, actors, producers, technical crews, who by the quality of the work on Kai Jonathan Buinja Mark Arco, are doing so much to enhance our reputation on the international stage for culture. The audiovisual content production sector has an annual turnover now in excess of a billion euro, providing employment to over 10,000 people. And while these are impressive figures, it is important to emphasize in policy and access that the arts are not viewed as merely a tool of tourism or commerce, but as an essential aspect of our fulfillment and flourishing as citizens. The arts have their own integrity and independence, are an essential component of a democratic society and make a profound contribution to that society, to our identity that is ever evolving and to our international reputation. I do remember as well, last year passed away, Alf McLaughlin, who wrote one of the very seminal first essays on why film was a separate genre. Those of you who work in those sectors and those of you who facilitate it are critical to the infrastructure of a creative, inclusive and participatory citizenship. And I do want to thank you all, therefore, for all you do in so many ways to bring the enriching joy of arts and culture into our lives, working to ensure that everyone receives the right to engage in the cultural life of our nation. So today, we are so, uh, this is a great celebration of creativity in its many different forms. A reminder of the many great creative talents that we as a nation had been gifted with and today are gifted with, especially of those who contribute to so much to the art of film and television. And Sabina and I appreciate the enthusiasm with which you have partaken in this special garden party. Thank you for responding to our invitation. And our wish is that on this fine summer afternoon, for what used to be summer, and you continue to enjoy yourselves. I think that may I, my focus square, may I thank all those who've come here this afternoon to play music, perform, and read. And what a program it has been, put together by the curators of today's event. We've had David O'Connor, Margaret Toomey and Eileen Finnell, the Carandonna Brass Band, Colm Harrigan, Brenda McSweeney, Noel O'Grady, John McCourt and the Triest Ensemble, my friends Steve Wall, Rosemary Rowley, the Frank and Walters, and our wonderful MC Fiocno Brennan. And for the quality of the sound, may I thank international reputation he has, D. Rogers. There he is there. Normally shy and retiring, he's taking a bow. I also want to make a special thank you to the staff at the Oris for the warmth of the community the reception, not just for all that they do. I want to thank our friends in John of God's for helping us with the invitations, the civil defence, the Gardaí, our volunteers in Gashka, and the tour guides, and all who have worked so hard to make today an occasion of friendship and joy. Karamila Mahagi Ilya, Kasakta Dillian Tronona. When it is salt us and could eat them law. Enjoy the rest of all of your time here and thank you for coming. Garamila Mahagi Galeer Barbanov.